Hi, it is Tuesdays Talking Reds. I'm Josh Sexton, joined today by Andy Heaton on Nobed Tuesdays. I've, uh, I've stepped in for Kev Walsh to With be even the, uh, more Nobed today. <laughs> the additional Nobed on yeah. Nobed Tuesdays. Uh, first thing, looking at Andy, um, obviously Arsenal played West Ham yesterday. Don't really want to get into that too much because completely relevant to us really, isn't it? But something that was relevant to Liverpool fans or, or Reds on um, on. The section of that programme last night, Monday Night Football, was, uh, was Caribbean on with Rafa Benitez, which I thought was really good. I've seen some clips from it. I didn't actually watch the game itself or MNF, to be honest, but I've seen some clips knocking around on Twitter, the ones that Kara shared himself. And one of the ones I liked in particular was, was the one about half time in Istanbul, because I think when you think of a, of a football team and, and football clubs, you almost think of them as being these you know, world class organisations which are so well run. And then you think about half time in Istanbul, how it must have been all oh, this, this big rousing motivational speech from Rafa, which got them back into this game. It made it the best comeback in, in, in European history, pretty much. But you know, they spent most of it dicking about over Jimmy Trory getting in, the, getting in and out of the shower, Steve Finn and being injured and all this sort of thing. And it just sounds absolutely wild. It's fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. Really compelling viewing. Um, and it's something I never, I'd never think I saw it happen because I, I, I never saw Jamie as a pundit, mm. and, and and I know Rafa wasn't really into the TV thing a couple of years ago, and I, I, there was reportedly a bit of tension between the two. But I think what came through yesterday is just how passionate the pair of them are. Yeah. You know, and I would, and the the will to win of the pair of them, and it was great because of the honesty between them as well. Cause, well what I found fascinating about about the exchange, we'll get into half time in a minute. Was sometimes you get a soft soap, you know, they're just being polite and genial yeah, yeah. and they're not really saying anything. Whereas the pair of them, they were going at it. In, yeah, in, like in, disagreeing, weren't they? With disagreeing, but in, in the right way. But, yeah. but you could see where they both get the, the competitiveness from. And then you think about, you talk about Istanbul, I mean, blah, blah, I mean, it seems like yesterday, but it is this kind of any given Sunday type thing, image you've got in your head because you're conditioned because of films and one thing and the other. Uh, and then see what it's actually like, and we forget now as well. I think it was mentioned on the show. Now at half time, you've got data banks of analysis and one thing and the other, and you know they've got much more information than what they had back then. And I think Rafa addressed that. He said, mm. "All we knew is that, you know, we got in, we had an injury, we had to deal, we had to change some things around. I had to think on my feet. I had one idea, but then we had to change that because it turned out Finn couldn't continue. And yes, yeah, just just chaos. It's absolute chaos. I, I think it actually adds to the story as well." I think that it, so, that yeah. it was so did it, it was so fly by the seat of your pants kind of thing, but um, it was compelling viewing, really, really compelling. And if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend if you can pick up any of the clips. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. There's like a nine minute one that, that Carragher shared himself on Twitter. I think it might have come from Sky Sports Monday Night Football Twitter, but Carragher shared himself, so get on his timeline, you'll be able to see it. But I, I agree. I, that I did I laugh it, when he was saying when he was talking about Liverpool and said they've got good, oh, yeah, good defenders now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. It's mental. But one of the things that I quite liked about it is, like you say, it adds to the story because I think I, I spoke to Sean in the office last week and I was sort of saying one of the things that I, that I don't really understand about Istanbul is that no one seems to have you know joined up stories about what happened at half time. So it was it was quite nice to almost to spell some of them myths about what was said and who stood up and, and who spoke. And it, it just sounds like, like I said, it just sounds like it was absolute chaos to be honest from from the minute they went in, where it's you know things that things are trying to change and Rafa's English is is not so good, so he's just sort of shouting at people saying shower. shower. Or Oh, the yeah. shower. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it's. Um, I think some stories make good copy, don't they? Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, the automatic assumption isn't this romantic? Oh, Rafa gave this rousing speech and Stephen stood up yeah. and you could hear the fans in the dressing room. Nah. I don't believe anyone. Nah. <laughs> nah. And you know what? Maybe if. In it, paradoxically, maybe the fact that you couldn't hear the fans or anything like that. In, in a way help because we all we know now it, it's mostly about focus and concentration and being professional yeah. as much as you can be professional whereas and look we all know how, how fantastic Steven Gerrard was and, and his game was and Carragher and the, the game was very much blood thunder and all the things that Carragher got excited about with Duncan Ferguson the other yeah. day but you have to have that laser focus and I think one thing that, that isn't made enough of and they mentioned it last night that Milan side you go through the names of that Milan team fucking hell no yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like a world eleven, isn't it? Unreal, unreal. And it, it, people talk about, you know, the final and oh, lucky Liverpool. But you look at the teams that, that we we had to go through to get there. Juventus were a fantastic side at the, at, at the time. Chelsea were ripping it up all over the place. You know, we only just qualified the group out of Olympiacos. Leverkusen were no mugs. I mean, I know we beat them three one in Anfield, but I remember we were three 0 up and Dusek made a howler in the last minute. And everyone's presumption was, oh, it's going to be tricky over in Leverkusen. Then we went over there and smashed them as well. No. So, yeah, no, brilliant, brilliant. And I think as well, I think because we've won another one since then, 
we can talk a little bit more honestly about it now as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not to say it's not romantic, you can't romanticise it, it was the greatest night in my life. No. But, you know, I, I, I just think now and listening to those two, I think they, they make a good double act. I do. I mean, if I, honestly, genuinely, but I don't know Jamie's got no, no real appetite to go into management anymore. But, I mean, I, I always remember, um, I mean, we've interviewed Paco a couple of times, and it was often said that he was kind of like the sounding board for Rafa. And he was the only one who had, who had, not the only one, but he wasn't scared of going, well, no, have you thought about this? No. And just seeing the two of them bounce off each other yesterday was absolutely fantastic. Given their own seat, bing Gary Neville off. No. <laughs> and just hire Rafa <laughs> and let them take over. Yeah. Or... Yeah, well, we're talk, talking about one Champions League winning squad. We'll go on to talk about our, our current Champions League winning squad in a moment as well. But one, uh, one squad which I don't imagine will ever be winning the Champions League, Andy, is, is Everton, of course. And, and uh, you know, I put on the agenda that Rafa didn't rule himself out of the Everton job. He, he, he pretty much put himself forward for it. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting because the question that got asked uh, from yesterday's comments section was, do you guys want Everton to go down? Because I know there's a bit of a disagreement on this at the Anfield Rap. And he says, wouldn't that be like Batman without the Joker? And wouldn't it be bad for the city in general? Now, my opinion on this is that I'd happily see Everton go down and not come back up. And, and my reason for that is, now that Liverpool are so good, I care less. I get less involved in the big games, if you will. I don't care as much about the big games because I just want Liverpool to win every game. And, and, I, and I, I, I hate the fear. I've got such a bad fear of, of Liverpool losing games now that, now that there is so much riding on it with you know, having to win every game to, to be able to go and push for a league title. Whereas when we were a bit worse, you, you can sort of get yourself up for them, them big games more because it's almost all you've got to look forward to. I would want uh, pretty much similar reasons to you. I know we laugh and joke, and I've said previously I'd love Evans to disappear off the face of the planet. I'm only joking, well, kind of. <laughs> but it's of all the games that I would hate to lose, it's them. Yeah. And if they weren't there, I, it, the, fear, the fear of them beating us is greater than the pleasure it brings me when we beat them. Exactly. I know we talk about Divock and Egi and one thing and the yeah. other. But, like the, but the we should beat them. We should do, and yeah. the fear of not. They've got nothing to lose in derbies anymore. And this isn't me being disparaging, they, they haven't. No, they don't. They've got nothing to lose, and all the pressure is on us. So if you just take them out of the equation, Grace, ask you a question now about the, the Everton thing. Go on. Do you think that was, um, do you think that was teed up? The Rafa thing? Do you think, do you, do you, you know that, like, so you know in press conference sometimes, I know it's breaking a bit of the fourth wall here, but <laughs> sometimes in press conferences, questions are, drop, are, are loaded. So a press officer will say, oh, why don't you ask him about no. in the press conference and then you get the answer you want? It's interesting, isn't it? Cause I think Rafa's one of them sort of managed, and I think he showed it in it his answer as well. It was clearly a rehearsed but, answer. Yeah, I think, I think, what I'm saying. I think he's, he's, he's just an ambitious football person, isn't he? And I think sometimes we can, we can get a bit too bogged down in this not being their jobs and you know, them be, in being passionate about Liverpool. And I do, I do think you know, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be a red all his the life. Money, but the, mo the money they've spent, the money Everton have spent, let's be, let's be nice, the money Everton have spent over the last four years, if either Rafa Benitez or Brendan Rodgers was in charge, but more Benitez, they'd be a million miles away oh, from where they are. Yeah. They'd be a million miles. 100%. And it's the fact that they couldn't... I don't know. I know there was talk two years ago before they even appointed Silver and even Koeman about, um, about Rafa. And there was always there was always the reaction, well, yeah, but he's managed them, hasn't he? Does it really matter that much to you? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm broadly speaking, so I'm, my only problem with Rafa going to Everton is that Everton will probably win a derby. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm saying it. Yeah, that's you know the worst thing, isn't it? <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't got a problem with him there. I think he's earned enough respect and done enough for, the, for, for us as a club and us as a city to, to, to get a pass on that. Yeah. And, he'd, and he'd, 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 be, he's the, he'd be the far, he's the best option for them right now. And it's just a shame that, well, it's not a shame, it's been great that they've been shy for years, but had they done it a couple of years ago, they, maybe they might be nearer to where they think they should be. Yeah, I'm, I've, got, I've got a fear of losing to Everton and Rafa Benitez or Carlo Ancelotti would, uh, would enforce that for me, but they're getting Simeone, aren't they? So we don't need to worry about any well. of that. Uh, if you've got a question for the Anfield Rap, though, leave it in the comments below and we'll answer one in tomorrow's video. Um, as promised, we're going to talk about the Champions League just after a little clip from our stat show preview in tonight's game. Moving forward to discuss Salzburg as they are our next opponents and what what an attacking radar this is. This is Salzburg in the uh, in the Champions League this season. They've got some of they've got I think Haaland's the top scorer. You've got you know that Lewandowski might be now Haaland was Lewandowski got about nine in his last game. You've also got in there the idea that they've got some of the top assisters. Uh, Minamino being a really good example of it. But you can see here how much they're pushing right the way out to the furthest percentile. You know it's an unbelievably high number uh, right the way around. So we'll start from the top and we're going to compare to Liverpool. Pool. two non-penalty XG uh, flat two and it's only five games remember but it's a flat two there uh, shot XG per shot 0.13 shots 16 
Uh, Counter-attacking shots, 2.4 is really high. 1.4 is the uh, is the 95th percentile for the Champions League this season. So we can see how much they're outperforming most metrics. Uh, set piece xG uh, is 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 all right. It's pretty solid in there. Uh, high pressing shots per game, 4.4. That's shots after a high press period of play. Uh, clear shots uh, per game, 3.6. Really, really good. Goalkeepers pass length tends to keep it, and they don't cross it very much. 20% for crosses uh, into the box. So you can see that's really strong. And we'll compare it with Liverpool in the Champions League so far this season. Liverpool the red, Salzburg the blue, and you can see they're outperforming Liverpool in most areas. Liverpool keeping the ball shorter off the goalkeeper. They've been slightly better in clear shots, slightly more shots from Liverpool, but everything else, Salzburg have been attacking better or as well as Liverpool over the course of the campaign. Move it forward though to the defending and there's Salzburg's defensive radar. Non-penalty XG conceded really high 1.6, XG per shot 0.11, number of shots 15, these are all really poor performances. Uh, Counter-attacking shots per game 1.3 is as we get right into the radar, Salzburg are 2.2, uh, that's pretty poor for Get a clean sh uh, clear, clear shots conceded, 2.8, okay, that's not so bad. Uh, decent from set pieces. Opposition passing 80%, that you'll get punished for that in the Champions League if you're going to allow sides to pass the ball with as much ease as that. Uh, aggression, 0.25, and defensive distance, pretty solid, and passes per defensive action, pretty solid. But what we can take from that is the opposition passing numbers are solid, uh, like from the opposition's point of view. So we can say that, yes, they're, they're, they're being relatively aggressive, putting people under pressure, uh, not allowing many passes per defensive action, but they're not actually stopping the opposition from passing to each other. That makes you wonder about how well they are pressing. Yeah, a little clip from our stats show there. You can get that on the Amphi Wrap app, so make sure you download that. Get stuck into all the rest of our content. You get 250 free tokens when you download it as well, so you can have a bit of a taster before you uh, before you buy anything or pay for anything. Uh, the team tonight, then, Andy. Um, yep. I was sort of expecting coming out of the Everton game that team to go again for this game. I, I sort of, I pretty much called the the Bournemouth one in terms of I thought we'd go with Salah and for me up top again because we've done that a few times. But now, given how Salah played the other day. I think there's going to be a temptation for Klopp to, to drop him back in and, and actually not, not bring Shakira back into this game. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, I think Salah had his best game. For I mean, I, I think it's been over-exaggerated over a little bit about Salah's dropping form. He's still been doing numbers. Yeah, all right. He hasn't hit the heights, but when your standards are that high, uh, I thought he was fantastic the night. Um, and also, I think Mane, I think, I think you nailed on that Mane's going to start tonight because yeah. he's had his little rest. And the, the pair of them, fit, sharp, quick, start the front three, try and put it to bed early. I, I, look, I, so I'm not doing down Salzburg, I think they're a dangerous opponent, but I just think because of the pressure on them and the, the opportunity for them there, there is, a, there is a, a, a part of me that thinks if Liverpool make a good start, that Salzburg could not collapse, but, yeah. you know, it may, we could make life really difficult for them early on. And I think to do that, you need to play your strongest level because there is a lot at stake. I think Anderson's, I think Anderson's comments yesterday were indicative of the attitude towards the game when he said it's the biggest game of the season. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll go with you. I'll go with the strongest 11. Trent back in at right back. Um, would you go Gomez centre half? I know. It, it, we don't know how fit Lover. You, you, you don't know. Yeah, he's yeah. been declared for for the game, but yeah, yeah again, that's sort of all, all down to sports science stuff like that. These exactly, days, it, so. exactly. And then your you midfield three. I mean, I don't know. When Alden's travelled, any so you yeah. presume if he's travelled, he'd start. And then what? Would you go for Henderson and? Probably, I, th I think Milner needs a rest, doesn't he? So I think when Alden probably comes back in, and then, and then maybe you go Cater as a ward for his form of the weekend. Yeah, I'd, I'd be tempted to drop for me out for this one though. I just think. What, what, what I liked about the Everton game was I think sometimes Liverpool are, Liverpool are side who can really control games now but I think there's, there's, there's almost a risk you can have a bit too much control and I think sometimes you need a bit of chaos So did you go and with the Rigi? And I think I go with the Rigi because he brings that bit of chaos and that's what I liked about the Everton game I, I said to Fuad when we were walking down to the ground we need, we need, another, we need another mad derby we need a, a derby which just creates a bit of chaos and I feel like that's what we need tonight just to sort of run them ragged for the first half and then maybe you can bring Firmino on and have that little and look it's a good option to have isn't it? Fair enough. Have, bring no, that I'm little not, bit I'm of control not, into not, the game. I'm not disagreeing I just said it's good to have options. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah we'll see. I think we will see yeah. Um, we're going to have all sorts of 
post-match reaction tonight to the game as usual. We've got our post-match show, which will be recorded here at our office. We're going to do, going to do the post-match pint from Jurgen's just across ne the road. Neil and well. John are going to do something mad. Yeah, Neil and John are doing something mad uh, called Hot Mic, is it? It is Hot uh, Mic. Where yeah. they're going to be commentating over the game, so you can download that app and use the Amphil Rap as your exclusive access code uh, and get stuck into all that as well. That should be should be a laugh, and they'll be having a bevy while they do it as well. So anything can happen, really. Can't yeah, they, they'll be having a bevy while I'm, I'm panicking the not on breaks. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be the one sweating behind the camera, which. Which you won't see. So, uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck to you for that. Yeah, Andy. cheers, mate. Yeah, um, nice but if you do love what we do at the Amphir Rap, uh, it's obviously in the build up to Christmas now. If you know someone who's a red in your life who you think would want an Amphir Rap subscription, then you can get them on our Amphir or, Rap. Or a blue. Sure now. Or, or a blue if you just want to piss them off. Yeah. That's shop.theamphirap.com. You can get a three month subscription, six month or a 12 month. So make sure you get on that. Get on everything else that we do. Download the app and, uh, yeah, that's in it. Nice one.